Well, hi and welcome to the show. And uh, what you must do is you must remember to plug in your earpiece and then people can hear you. Oh, I can hear me. <laughs> I can hear you. Anyway, welcome to show number 11. Uh, absolutely uh, delighted to be here. And uh, we can see people are actually sh uh, showing up. So this time we know it's all working and everything is going out live. That's really cool. Uh, listen, I have some uh, really good stuff uh, to go through today. Um, I've got an interview uh, from Goran. Um, I've also got an interview from Marcus. And I found the video uh, that I made uh, three years ago when we had an addition impact to do with brain training. And it was the, it was the, yeah, anyway, I'm not going to get into what it is because we can, we can watch it anyway. I want to bring that in. I will do uh, towards the end of the show. Now, that's only about six minutes long, that video, but it really is pretty good, pretty good. Um, so we'll get on with that. So, and then also what we've got to go over is uh, we've got some emails come in, people having great success, which is really, really cool to read about. Some quite interesting emails as well. How, um, yeah, how, how they're adjusting to sense of knowing, sock moment, things like that. So without further ado, we will get straight into Goran's interview, and then I'll come back and have a few words about that, and um, yeah, and then we'll go from there. So let's get that over to that one now. Everyone's there. It'll be coming on, and uh, here's a few questions this morning which we'll be going over. Hi, Goran. Yep. Okay, Hi. got you. you. Got you clear now. Okay. <laughs> yes. Right. So I got you. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, what were yeah. you doing? You, you went off to have a quick shave, did you? No, I did not. I, <laughs> you know, in Sweden we have this tobacco called snus. It's basically um, it's fine grain the tobacco which you which you bake. You can also do it by yourself, but you bake it in the oven, right? right. Uh, it's it's like uh, uh, you and and you put it on your lip. So it doesn't look nice when you try to, you know, present yourself. So it's, it's better to take it out. Okay. So what you're saying is you were trying to keep, make yourself very good looking on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, of course. Okay. Well, look, listen, we had a, a situation this morning, obviously, where we couldn't do the live show for some technical reason or whatever, and mm -hmm. we're going to sort that out anyway, so it's not a problem. So meanwhile, you, I saw a question, well, I saw you could come online and you had some questions regarding Pat and some indicators. So uh, far away with yeah. what you have there and we'll cover those. Yeah, because basically what you just, you just fed us with this software and we, we, we use it and we try to find your, our sense of knowing. But what I see is that, if, for example, if you look at the 15, if you look at, the, uh, when you do the, do the um, simulations, you get, um, you get your 15 minutes and you get your 45 automatically. Even if you choose, you get always going to get your 50 minutes, and you get some smarter shot. But in the 50 minutes, you have more indicators than you have on the 45. 45 is just clean, and then you can then you can um, add, uh, you know, 90 pip or or trend bar or trend lines, and and also you can see the volume. But there are other indicators coming coming on on the 50 minutes, and that's just. Okay, now, well, the first off, the thing is, of course, when you're looking at a 15 minute chart, a 45 minute chart, you're breaking the breaking it down. So we've got uh, 45 minutes, yeah. we've got three times 15. Obviously, that goes without saying. So, yeah. what, yeah. and if you think about the 15, it's just more, it's a, it's a sharper, not a sharper tool, but it's, it, it, it's a sharper edge. So it's giving us uh, a closer look. It enables us to break down the 45 minutes into three sections, you know, and, to, and not, but to not, not put too fine a point on that. It's not exactly three sections, but because you don't know, you know, you can't say it's one, two, three, because you might get some information in the second part of that, uh, the second block of those 15 minutes. However, that's all it's for. Now, when you're doing simulations, well, just let's go back to your question first off, because do you feel, I, I got from your question, do you feel that, do you do you struggle with the fifteen, or or do you feel better with the forty-five? What's going on? You know, where where is your conflict between those two time frames? Well, I think that the the forty-five is. I'm I'm quite comfortable with 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 forty-five minutes to use it to to see the to see what's going on. Okay. 
and um, and they also it, I think it's very good to 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 everybody to try to to uh, to um, try out as many um, uh, um, currency pairs as possible. Even if even if you, I for example, I was using uh, yesterday was uh, uh, yen against the U.S. dollar, which uh, you know doesn't really uh, um, would be this the, the the correct. I believe it will not be the 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 currency pair I will be using because uh, it will, will be in the in the in the wrong uh, time zone. Okay. Well, let me just let me just stop you there. Okay, because mm -hmm. this is quite an important point we've just raised. You've said about looking. At, you you believe it's important to look at different uh, different currency pairs. Yeah, absolutely. And this is absolutely yeah. true. Now, let me explain why that's important. Because when we talk about the sense of knowing, when we talk about looking at a screen and getting a sense mm. of knowing and knowing what to do, does it really matter in what currency pair that comes from? And the answer, of course, is no. Now, when you listen to, I mean, tomorrow we've got an interview coming on uh, with Stephen, mm. um, Stephen Hollier, yeah. who's in Australia. This is going to be directly applicable to the conversation we're having now, certainly at about this section, oh. because he okay. talks about, now he's gone basically from 20 losing trades in a row to getting seven out of eight. Now, I put a little bit on the website oh. about that, but this is the, tomorrow we're going to get the full interview. So you're going to get to see and you know hear what Stephen has to say and see what's going on. And then you'll see how I then sort of warn him about a great danger about you know he, he's in at that moment it may seem a bit strange that you know he's doing very well but i'm warning him about a, a danger but you know, i'm not going to go into too much of that now because i want you to see that tomorrow on the live show and even if you can't get to the live show you'll be able to see that recorded tomorrow anyway to go over it so mm -hmm. when you're now getting back to you you said about um looking at the the different uh, different currency pairs now this is this is very mm -hmm. good information because what we're looking for is that sense of knowing so my question is does it does it matter where it comes from now Stephen says at no. one point he says that and you'll listen to this it's very 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 encouraging when you look and you and you will get the same feeling he said he sometimes he starts pat up he looks at the screen and he cannot start his broker platform fast enough because he knows exactly what wow. he has to do okay now think about this <laughs> If he starts that that up, and he started it on the Japanese yen, on the cable, on the euro, on the New Zealand dollar, does it matter? It doesn't no, matter. Basically, does it? not. No, no. It, but it doesn't matter. What What I can see is that, I mean, if if uh, if the trading simulations here are accurate according to the to the uh, to the way the market is moving through these currency pairs. You definitely going to see that this. For what I could see, even the Japanese and the, uh, and the dollar, the spread is is much uh, narrower between high and low, and it has a different, you know, moving altitude or frequency or altitude, or say yes, or um, then if you if you look at the dollar and U.S. dollar. I mean the, the 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 pound and the dollar, and even euro and the dollar. So the that was quite interesting to 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 work with the Japanese and dollar because it has basically only two. I can see during you know during a day, it's only two times that something's really happening. All the other time is just consolidating, basically. Right. And I think I think. I think when you start, you know, uh, working with different currency pairs, I think you have to um, to see, you know, when are they actually moving? When when is the move? Uh, uh, the market makers doing any moves? Yeah. Because it's, that's different from every market. Yeah. That's different from every market. Yeah. What I can see. Okay. Well, let's just watch one thing on there, but for, um, because. What you're saying is so so true, and this is where I'm sort of leading you. And you'll see when you get to show, when you go through the, sh the next live show, this yeah. is where I'm leading you because 
ultimately, I don't care what you look at, and neither should you. You, you shouldn't care about that. Now, t people talk about having radar things set up and scanning, uh, the, you know, automated trading where they're scanning different markets. And what they're doing, they're, they're getting a computer right. to look at patterns, and they recognize a pattern, and the pattern right. comes up and says, okay, this one's ready. It's sort of a scanner type of thing. Now, what I'm doing with you here, with everybody on this course, is turning you into the scanner, okay? Now, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. turning you into a scanner, but not in the terms of a pattern. I'm turning you into a scanner in the terms of a sense of knowing. So when you are looking at a yeah. screen, so you might put on a currency pair, you might look at it for a few minutes and see nothing. Nothing triggers in you. No, nothing. You have no sense of knowing. Yeah. You have no understanding. Exactly. And then you yeah. look at another pair, and the same thing might happen again. And then you look at another pair, and you think, oh, and immediately when you look at that currency pair, you, you know what you have to do. And this is what Stephen talks about when he, you know, when he, he puts Pat on, he literally can't turn the, get the broker's platform on fast enough. So that's what I'm looking for you to do. So all your simulations are really geared towards developing that sense of knowing so that it turn you into an automatic scanner. So you don't have to sit around, um, you know, hours and hours and hours looking at this because like you say a lot of the time we're talking consolidation which is really accumulation and manipulation but we're talking a lot of time we're, we're involved in that and of course we don't want to be sitting around in that period all that time we want to simply come back have a look and see if something jumps out at us that would warrant us taking a trade mm -hmm. so that's what that's that's where we're going and, and as you'll see from Stephen how he's sort of achieved that but I'm really pleased that you've brought this question up about looking at different markets because that was really where I was probably probably going to go in, in, in the next show anyway, but I wanted to talk about turning you into the scanner thing, and that's why you know, I didn't want to do this from the start, because if I said to you from the start, look, go off and um, scan all these markets, and it would have been too big for you. Oh, it's going to be, a it's much, be too, yeah, yeah, too big. It's yeah, too big. much, big, much mm -hmm. bigger field. And also, you know, I had a feeling when I was, uh, I haven't been, you know, I have been so busy doing other things, and, and yesterday I was sitting down, and I was, and then when I was starting to to um, uh, to um, to do some trades, then I I found myself, you know, instead of being, you know, um, say that, you know, being caught up in the chart, I was thinking, what is going to happen now? What are they? Th what are they thinking of doing? And trying to distance myself, my, myself from the chart, and you know, so just try to see that my thought, my my, um, uh, you know, um, my uh, perception of what's going to happen is is uh, you know, just just leave it there and just see what happens and see, and it. I, I did maybe um, seven seven trades and five of them are okay and two are not okay yeah now listen i've got so to stop you there a, i've got to stop i've got to stop you there because that is what what you've done there and i'm sorry to interrupt you like this when you do but it's like when 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 somebody says something to me that's so important that i reckon that it's important for them and it's also important for other people that's why i interrupt you at those points because you know you, you yeah, come up with some really good things and, and what you've just come up with there you said about how you and i could see your body language as well how you distance yourself you, and you use this term where you left yourself there. You just you just left it there, and what's that? What that is doing yeah, exactly. is you're you're mm. you're waiting, and you? It's almost like you're waiting for that sense of knowing to come up. Does does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah. It is. It, it does. It is. It it's actually you you something triggers you to do to go in to do something, and then you just follow. You know. Sometimes your 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 you have misinterpreted the market, but most of the times actually it's it's going the right way. It maybe takes a little bit longer time than you think, but it has to do also with what kind of market you're in. When when I was wo working yesterday with Japanese and dollar, it is a slower market. It takes a longer time. If I look at the, the, the pound and the, and the dollar, it's more aggressive. It is like boom. It 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 you know it yes. It, it builds up much faster, and then it, you you can really sense that something's going to hover. Something is hovering through something. It hovers around something, and then yeah. boom, it goes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Again, I'm going to either up or down. Again, I'm going to stop you then there because there's two things I want to mention about that. The first thing is for the people that are just going to be watching this later on, I want you to rewind the rewind a little bit there. Goran, you wouldn't know this because you didn't see it, but I do. I want you to rewind a little bit and I want you to look at Gor the change in Goran's physiology when he talks about that sense of knowing. You can see the sense of knowing sort of comes out. It doesn't use a direct um, thing about sense of knowing, but look at the, the expression on the face change. Okay, now Goran, back to you. <laughs> okay, so when you were talking to me about that, when you were saying to me about that sense, you didn't use the word sense of knowing, but that, that knowing, you went back in the chair, yeah. your facial expressions all changed, you had a half smile yeah. appeared yeah. on your face, yeah. and that is the feeling of understanding something. That's the, that's the business. Yeah. Let's say that's the visual representation of you. It's the aha moment. It's the understanding. Yeah. You, you looked at the different markets, you know, and then, sorry, and then your second part you went on and said, you, it's more, one part is more aggressive and it's a different and how it works. Now that's you becoming attuned to the market. Now somebody would say cynically, oh, well, that's just showing on the chart, the different thing. And that's not true because the chart is a static thing after it's done. But if, when you become attached to the market, are not attached as such, but when you become connected to the market, they are the feelings you start to have. So when you look back in your chair, you have that calmness about what you're doing and you start to see the market, that is the moment when the information is flowing through to you. And, and, I, and I'm pretty sure that that makes a lot of sense to you, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good. Well, look, um, uh, you know, I think... What, what we should do at this point, unless you've got any specific questions, what we should do is we should actually cut this interview now because I want you to mm -hmm. go tomorrow and listen to what Stephen has got to say. And then I'm going to mm -hmm. try and bring this, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to bring, uh, you know, we'll keep this short and I'll bring this interview into the show as well so that we can, so we can, because this is a mm -hmm. great interview. I'm really pleased that we've spoken about this because this is going to lead on fantastic mm -hmm. from Stephen's. Uh, interview which we did before Christmas uh, okay. and then it's going to lead on marvelously through here so um, have you watched show nine yet by the way uh, yes, uh, 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 okay mm. you'll see that it's interesting when you get to see mm. Stephen he was way behind so when I actually spoke to Stephen and done the show uh, uh, the, the interview with Stephen uh, he was way behind he, he's got two young children and um, he said he was really struggling to keep up but you know anyway he, he's, he's getting where he wants to get now so which is great so look let's call it a day on this one now and um, We'll catch up mm. uh, on the live show tomorrow. And if you want to come on again on the live show tomorrow, to sort mm. of finish up and then cap on anything, we can go from there. Is that okay? That's okay. Absolutely. Okay. Mm. All right. Well, lovely. Well, let's call it a day now, and I'll catch up with you tomorrow. Thanks very much for that. It's been really good. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Hi. Welcome back. Now, that was really, really good. I enjoyed that interview. Now, the next interview that comes up, um, it's quite interesting. Now, this was uh, with Marcus. Now, Marcus had mailed me in the in the week, uh, saying that he was having problems. Um, I can't remember the exact wording that they used in the, in the email, but he was having problems understanding maybe sense of knowing stuff like that really coming through. And it was just an awkward time zone. He's in uh, Finland. It was an awkward time zone to get back. So there was a few days delay in getting back. But I only got back to him. We actually managed to hook up together uh, yesterday. So I recorded this interview. It's only a short one. Um, but what's interesting is that uh, when we actually, by the time we got to doing the interview, uh, what had happened was that there'd been a change. Marcus had had a change. He, he went from not understanding to understanding. Uh, so it was quite a, a nice transition to sort of go through to, to uh, you know, interview and watch. But um, uh, to watch now as it were coming up. But the thing that changed uh, the thing for Marcus was watching Stephen's interview. Um, so anyway, have a listen now to what he says about this, and then we'll come and talk, back and talk about that. Now, just before um, we go on to that, pop any questions you want up onto the chat, because um, you know I can see these, and I can plan then and go, and, and go through and answer those when I come back to these sections. I see there's a question come up about stop loss. I want to go through that. Um, so we'll go through that after this. And... Uh, yeah, and a few other questions. So, and then also, anybody wants to come on um, on the chat after, sorry, on the Skype later when we get to the end, get yourself set up on there, and we'll we'll kick off onto that. So anyway, guess let's get straight back into this interview, and I'll be back with you shortly. Yeah, well, hello, Marcus. <laughs> hello. Yeah, uh -huh. it's it's very cold in Finland. Minus twenty-two here. Minus twenty-two. 
Yeah, and it was minus 38 just a couple of days ago. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, that sounds terrible. <laughs> I, I, when, when I looked at your name, Marcus Caprico, I thought, thought um, is that how you pronounce it, by the way, Marcus Caprico? Uh, it's Caprio. Oh, I don't Capri know. That's some different Caprio. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, we got like yeah, there's a lot a, of there's a few, same shirt. Yeah, there's a few in Finland. Um, so um, I've got another customer. Oh, I don't think we're oh, – Goran is in Sweden. Have you? Have you? Um, yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah, he he said the other day it was I, he was on yes no a couple of days ago it was minus twenty there. Yeah, but it's Sweden. It's kind of more well. It's next door neighbor to us, but you know oh, it's okay. kind kind of lower southern right. southern side. But right. we beat the Sweden in hockey, so we beat them in <laughs> weather too. So <laughs> good for you, Oran. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm sure you'll have a comment about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we will. Right. So, talk to me. Where are you at? Where, 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 where do we need okay. to go? Okay. Uh, well, now I have come to a stage that I actually try to do these really small, careful deals, not like five pips or ten pips or fifteen pips, and I just ended up going a lot of minuses. Well, then I watched Stevens, uh, you know, the video you did last time. Then I was, okay, I was, I was in that place you told told about. Okay. Very dangerous place to be. Right. So now we're doing the longer deals and, you know, have the uh, stop loss at like 50 to 60 pip lever. And now actually I'm doing pretty good simulations now. So now I think I'm in the right place for for now so i'm just okay. following up how does it look like okay waiting well, for the sock moment right yeah. that's that's good now that's that's very good so what you've i'm going to ask you a question now when you since you've now moved well first off were you trading for five or six pips was that what you were trying to get uh, yeah just like try to get some kind of a feel i was trying to make it safe so have uh, okay. a really well, yeah. short okay well, yeah a couple so of it things was like there. scalping yeah. Okay. We don't want to be doing that. We we, we don't want to be doing that now. No, a couple no. of things I wrote there are, straight away. I wrote down. You said the word careful it was the first thing I wrote on my pad. Uh, um, and then you talked about you know getting back the sense, getting going away from the sense of knowing, and then getting back the sense of knowing. Now, what happens is that when you when you have this um, tight stop loss, um, there's nothing wrong with this. It, you, later on, you can do this. But but for now, what we need to get you to do is. We need to get your sense of knowing really honed down to a very fine tool. Now, I think I've just lost you on there. Now I've got you back. Can you see me okay? Yep. Yeah, we're back. Okay, we're back. Okay. Yeah, the signal here. Just <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's so, cold. <laughs> it's a cold signal. <laughs> okay, so what we need to do is yes. to, to make sure that we, 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 sh we sharpen this tool. It's got to be a very, very sharp tool that you're using when you're using sense of knowing. Now, what people will do is they'll start using this and they will become very good at it. They're very, very good. And so they think they become invincible. They, they, okay, we can just do this now. Now I can put this very tight stop in here, and I'll, this is how I'll trade. And like I say, that would be okay when we get to that stage. But what we need to do is that when we enter the market, we, do, we can't absolve ourselves from responsibility. So look at it like this. Yeah. When, we get, when we're looking to get into a market, we are responsible. We take control of that. We wait for our sense of knowing. We get the aha moment, and then we enter the market. Now, that's perfect. That's what we want to be doing. Now, if we then put a 10 or 15 pip stop underneath that, what that does is, it, it not in all cases, but in most cases, it absolves the trader from responsibility to then have that sense of knowing about whether to close that trade or not. So you go from a sense of knowing on an entry to a fixed concept or a fixed strategy, if you like, of getting out. And so the, the, the whole model, the sense of knowing model, if you like, it falls apart because it, it's on one hand you're saying to your subconscious and your mind, yeah, I trust you. I trust you to get me in the market here at the right time and, 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 and deliver what I want. And on the other hand, you say, okay, now you've given me that. Um, okay, we'll throw that out the window now. And we'll just wait and have this stop here and see how the trade works out. And hopefully what you can see is that that creates a conflict in the mind. And when there's a conflict in the mind, and as soon as then 
fear or doubt or emotion of that comes up, what will happen is the sense of knowing will literally abandon you. It will it will just fly out the window. It, 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 it won't function with fear, trying to be careful, trying to protect yourself. It won't function in, in the way that we need it to function. Does, does that sort of make give you an idea? Yeah, it makes sense that, you know, I noticed myself, okay, I was too, like, tied down with a really, you know, small amount of stop loss. And it actually, you know, inhibited me, you yeah. know, having the full potential of suck. That, mm -hmm. that was a, what I felt immediately. Okay, I needed to go a bit low so I can, you know, confirm, okay, I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. But, you know, past couple of days have been that, okay, I have just sensed the big ups and big downs so yeah. i'm kind of you know going there but now i give him up the you know really tight stop losses like right. in the stevens video i mean that really made a difference for me i've been doing 10 videos i'm still kind of looking but now i know i think right. where i should be okay yes. great great that's good and i just it's interesting what you're saying this because this was uh, tomorrow morning um you know we're going out live with a, a show tomorrow morning yeah. and um this um this this mail actually came in from uh uh, from John, and uh, he, listen, listen to this. I'll just read you out what happened here. He says, um, "Hi Martin and Nikki, I had a really cool thing happen today while trading. I came to the charts with data info that I'd been thinking about what the market makers might be up to. I glanced at the GB chart, chart placed a trade, and within less than a millisecond, I knew this market was going to go down. I hit sell without a thought." And he puts in brackets and in big capital letters, I never, never do this. Okay. So this is totally, he, he just had this and just did it. And, and that's how he went in. And he said, it scared yeah. him so much. So it scared me that I closed the trade off. But it will be forever clear to me there is a place and time between rational thinking and creative thinking. So what happened there? Uh, for John is he'd had this absolute this thing had just hit him bang he knew exactly what to do and because it was an alien completely alien way for him to trade it completely threw him he, he, he and immediately so he so he placed a trade and started to go off and do what he was going to do and then it immediately just panicked because he didn't understand where the sense of knowing had come from although that's a training what we're doing but he didn't have the confidence and the faith yeah. to, un to and to use that, and that's a big thing with traders, uh, Marcus. That you know is when they start to use a sense of knowing, it's like, I, you know, I've got some other males down here, which are just incredible. Uh, you know, they're reading through them, and, and people are saying, "Wow, could, you know, trading's never felt like this before." It, you know, it just trading has, and these are these are people who've been trading for a lot of years, and they say it's just never felt this calm before, uh, and so they're having a job to. So it's happening for them, but they're having a job to mentally adjust to it. And, and you know, that's what this course is about, is getting people to yeah. totally accept that sense of knowing. And when you do, Marcus, you know, everything changes. It's just, it's, you know, everything changes. You know, you'll, you'll have the same smile that I'm wearing now, okay? <laughs> it will all, it will all, it yeah. will all go good. All right. So, um, so you feel at this stage then that you... You, so you just by watching Stephen's video, you sort of were off kilter. You've now come back on target, uh, and now you're happy with where you are at this stage. Is that right? Yes, I mean you're probably you know I'm feeling that okay now this is the thing that people are doing. They are just getting the sense of knowing. They're not rushing it like like Stephen said. You know he had to rush to his computer to make the you know the the deal and then really hurry hurry hurry. But like Steven said, okay, now he's making the 90 pips and I mean, whatever. Yeah. But that is just, you know, the thing I want to do also, you know, have yeah. it, you know, on the computer. Of course, I have a, my day job, so that takes a lot of trading time out. But, you know, I'm just starting little by little, so yeah. no hurry here. Yeah, that's the way. Yeah. And um, it's, it's, I'm really pleased because what you said about it's, it's helpful. What is, it's helpful. What is why I do these interviews. It's so important to do the interviews because you get to have a real insight into how other people, you know, where they are on the course and, and what's happening to them. Because without that, it's like, for example, you saw Stephen's uh, interview and that 
really helped you. It, it sort of fired something up, and you thought, okay, well, this is yes, all right. It did. This is this is okay. I understand now, and it's all very well me spouting away and telling you about the sense of knowing all this sort of stuff. But ultimately, you have to experience it. So when you can have another person experience it, and you say, oh, okay, now yeah, I see what he means now. Now I sort of get it. And that's why I love to do the interviews. They are such an important part, of, you know, of learning, uh, you know, and to get to where we want to get to. Yeah, I agree with that because I mean, the first videos I was feeling okay. I'm not like this good because some of the guys really went out and had a lot of deals. I was okay. How on earth are they doing that? But you know, I'm at yeah. number ten, so yeah. I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah, and and this is the thing as well because don't think for a moment that you are behind or somebody is advanced or you're you know don't yeah. don't treat it this way i know it's quite hard to look at that sometimes because you might hear an interview and you think oh wow you know crikey what have i missed you know what have, what have i missed well you haven't really yeah. missed anything it's just the fact that something has clicked with that trader or that student it's clicked a little bit earlier now what can happen though marcus so, you know and and i don't want i don't want to put a negative spin on this but what you will find often is that the ones that take off very quickly get the sense of knowing and get into the market very quick. And you think, wow, you know, they're like a way ahead of me. What you'll find is that they will hit a ceiling quite soon and it will knock them back a peg or two. And, and what's happened is they've gone off into the sense of knowing, let's say 90 percent informed or 90 percent confident. And then so when they have a bit of a hit, it sort of brings them back and it brings them back down two or three notches. And then you're you're but you're already here. So when they come back down, you think, oh, okay. and, and, and it sort of evens itself out. So that's oh, what we so. end up with is this constant sort of thing. And it gradually gets less and less and less and less and less until we get to where we want to be. And then everybody's pretty much on the same uh, playing field. And then it becomes a um, how can I say it becomes a, a chat. You know, we don't talk about trading so much. It becomes more about a chat about what we're doing and how things are going. It, it becomes yeah. less of a learning env environment. And uh, not that that's more fun because I just I still love doing the interviews anyway. I mean, I love doing what we're doing. I love you coming on. And yeah, the fact that you tell me, you know, you sit with Stephen and then we get to hear what he says and uh, and, um, and and the others. And um, hopefully, well, next week we're going back to American time because we've got to give our cousins across the pond a fair crack of the whip. Um, they've got to, uh, you know, we've got to, yeah, get, um, because we can't keep them up at two or three o'clock in the morning. You know, we don't want to tire them out as well. So next week we'll do that. Uh, <laughs> out of there, so we'll get some more of them back on. And uh, okay, well, look, well, we'll. So if that's okay now, we'll call this uh, interview a close now at this point, and then I'll run that through. I'll run this interview through next uh, tomorrow on the live show as well. Um, will you be around for the live yeah, show? That is all right. Yeah, you're okay with that. Uh, this was. Yeah, this was the European time. Okay, right here. Yeah, this one's going to be Europe, European time. Um, if we ever do an interview and yeah. you're not happy with something going out, you've only got to tell me, and then I, I'll either cut that bit out or we don't send the interview out at all. But of course, it's nice if you can let the interview go out because other people learn from you. Just the same, yeah. because I guarantee, Marcus, that there will be people who will watch our interview and say, "Oh, thank God for that! I'm not the only, I, I, I'm just where Marcus is." And that's it. I, I feel good now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then they go. Yeah, forward. and the most important thing that everybody knows Finland beats Sweden in ice hockey. <laughs> I will make sure that Goran <laughs> knows about that from there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, all, all right. right. Well, look, well, this was really great. Okay, no, that's great. And uh, I'll catch up with you tomorrow. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. Yeah. Okay, take care. Okay. Hi, welcome back. Um, interesting, interesting. Uh, interview with Marcus there, how, how he'd um, got that sense of knowing had come along after a result of watching um, uh, Stephen's interview. Um, I'm looking down, because I've got a few cards, things I've, uh, thing I've written up about here. Um, I just ran a quick poll, and you know, these are anonymous polls, by the way. I don't know who clicks on them. I don't know, um, you know, it doesn't tell me who's doing what and what's doing what. It's just, it's just a poll, a broad poll. And um, the, the last one was how many, how much time devoted to your course? I, you know, I appreciate your honesty. I mean, at least you know, you know no, I don't, I don't feel anybody sort of, you know, gilding the lily. Let us say, I, I don't know if you understand gilding the lily. Um, there is only twenty percent of you that are that are devoting hundred uh, percent effort to the course. Um, there are forty percent of you that are, that are putting in fifty percent of effort, and there are thirty percent of you that are giving twenty five percent effort. 
you know, and you know, I understand. I, I do understand because this is can be reflective of work hours you have to do. Um, it can be reflective of a whole lot of things. But one of the things I I hope it isn't is something that we just talked about or sort of sort of came across in the last interview, and that was the where, where you feel you are in the that where you, where do you feel you are along the road to success where we want where we want to get to because what i don't want you to do is to feel despondent because you think that you're behind now that can easily easily happen because when you hear of people saying okay well they've now gone from seven to eight where uh, you know uh, seven weeks out of eight weeks now they're profitable the sense of no one's kicking in they understand what they've got to do they've stopped using the stops and uh, they have a sense of knowing about it. when you hear all this going on it's like you know if you're not at that stage you're thinking wow well, you know what have i missed i must have missed something uh so, and then you start getting into a thing where you want to go back over the videos and you're looking for that something when really you should be looking inside but you can get very despondent um or quite despondent so very despondent. you can get despondent if you approach it with that mentality so don't do it. Please don't do it. It's it's not going to serve you any purpose at all. It's actually going to just just do you harm because you know you can get to a point where you think, "Oh, I'm falling so far behind, I can't ever catch up." That is not the case. Uh, you will find that you know you could be where you are now. Let's say that you think you're behind, and all of a sudden you could make a within two or three days you could literally go right to the front. You could go you know, and again, there's no front, but you could go right up in your sense of knowing and quite dramatic things can happen with your trading. And all of a sudden you realize that all the time you've had this, you just been ha haven't been able to manifest it out uh, into your trading. So, you know, please do not become despondent. It is not worth it. You know, we will get there. Everybody will get there. Nobody gets left behind. Okay. Now we do have this other short clip that I want to show you, but I'm not going to show it just yet because I want to address a few questions. Um, and uh, stock, uh, stock management when we talk about the stock management and the sense of knowing now somebody actually put a goran put up actually um how it was better to not use a stop and use the sense of knowing now i want to explain the concept or, or behind the not using a stop now when i again when are you not using a stop you remember on stephen's interview i said look i want you to use a stop do, do use a stop and but you have a stop a wide way wide way away you might bring that stop instantly down to five pips you, you may do that that's okay providing you're bringing that stop down on the sense of knowing now by putting a stop loss um let's suppose i'll try and do uh, I'm trying to do a graphic thing you, you you entered this level here you have this level here that you want to get out say with your profit on here and let's suppose this level this tiny level down, down here is your stop loss here now what that does is that will disconnect you from the market on 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 exiting the market it'll disconnect your brother disconnect your sense of knowing by having a wider stop loss you will be completely hooked in and connected to that market from the moment you enter you'll be watching the up move you'll be watching the down move you'll be retaining that level of connectivity and that is how you manage that type trade in, in terms of risk however every trade like that you're looking you have the sense of knowing for getting in which you should have and if you haven't got that then you shouldn't be in the market don't surrender that then to a mechanicalized process of, oh, here is 10 pip stop. There's a 15 pip stop. Because what it does is it just connect, disconnects you. It, it, it absolves you from the responsibility. It absolves you from having that sense of knowing. You, you know, your, your mind, your body, whatever, doesn't need to now give that sense of knowing up as to get out of the market because there is this stop that's going to take you out anyway. Um, you know, and an example of that is how many times have you gone into the market, you've placed a stop there, and then you, the market goes off, goes into the money, and you think, okay, that's great, that's lovely and wonderful. And then the market starts to come back down again, and it takes you out of the out of the money. And let's say you have a fifteen pip stop on that market, and you say, and you say to yourself, you know, this is yeah, this is going to stop me out. I know it is. It's going to stop me out. Now, what happens is the, the, then the mind says, okay, well, it's only a few pips. I'll just I'll just wait and see. I'll just wait and see if it comes back. And it comes back a little bit. Oh, it's come back a little bit. And then it comes back down a bit. Oh no, it's going against me now. I'll just hold. Well, it's only five pips now, so it, it, if it's going to stop me out, it's just five pips lost. Uh, so I can't, you know, it might go up. So what should I do? So what happens is all this confusion, all this mental chatter that's going on. You stay there, sit there, and watch it come down. Take out your fifteen pip stops, and you say to yourself, "I knew it would do that." And what you did was you just threw away your sense of knowing. 
So use your sense of knowing to manage both ends of the trade. That's getting in and getting out. Use it for both ends. Okay, uh, I covered the don't do it respondent. Um, the, a couple of other things I uh, just wanted to go through. Interesting, I when uh, we talked about um, John, when he said about in less than a millisecond how he knew, he got that from the interview, millisecond he knew what he had to do. He never, ever does this, and it frightened him. Um, so he just closed the trade off because he was so unused to doing that. And that can happen, um, from, um, that can happen to anybody. It often does when uh, people haven't been using sense of knowing, and then it comes along to them and hits them like a, you know, like a train, and they're not used to it. Uh, and then it, you know, it really does uh, throw them off kilter, and so they panic and go into a mode where they will close off trades to get to get rid of that. Okay, so if it happens to you, don't worry about it. It's a good sign. Uh, we're getting where we want to get to. Um, okay, and well, look, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on and just show this next clip uh, that I've got. This is I recorded this, I believe, in 2013, but it's so important nicely just I was going through some stuff yesterday and I found this clip and it's about an addition that we put in Pat at the time it was about how to get you hooked into the market when you step up to your screen so sometimes you put the market on and you feel disconnected you don't feel connected to the market and of course you need to achieve that so how do you do that well let me exp let, let's go through the video and, um, and and look at how that occurs and, and how that the tool in Pat that you can use uh, to kick that off. So let's go and uh, have a look now. Let's, by the way, this was a, this was a great video, beautiful sunny day. We were sitting on top of our um, our uh, motor yacht in uh, in the marina. But anyway, you can you can have a look. But I'll be back with you very soon. Well, hi and welcome to another Pat training video. Now uh, we're filming today on the top of top deck of Blue Lagoon, which is our boat, and we're uh, we're moored up currently in Havelock Marina. Absolutely beautiful day, as you can see. And I thought what a fantastic backdrop it would make uh, to this video. Now I'm very excited today because we've got a, a, a new, not so much of a new thing into Pat software because we've we've had this for some time. But let's just say we've modified it in a certain way. But before I get to that, I'd like to explain to you. The, the reason why this has been been put in there. It's all very easy to add things into software, which we hate to do, but if we come across something where we think we really can make a difference to a trader, we certainly will go all out to get that in. Now, this story backs up to some months ago when I was watching a, a documentary about how uh, we believe the conscious mind is, is in control of what we're doing, uh, but in, in reality, the subconscious mind is in control. Now, it was a simple experiment set up in a gymnasium. There was uh, several people were brought, or quite a lot of people were brought in. They're all fitted with head cameras, and uh, which basically was set around the eye, uh, the eye areas these cameras were set up, and everything was recorded back to a, a main computer about what was going on. Now, the participants were simply instructed to try and catch a mini helicopter. So they had a guy in the gymnasium controlling a little remote helicopter, flying it all around, bringing it down, taking it up, and each person was instructed on an individual basis, so one person at a time, to try and catch that helicopter. And that's all they had to do. So they went through the whole, uh, all the people in the room, and then all the data was analysed afterwards. But before they got to that and revealed what was going on, they asked each individual person how they tried to catch the helicopter, what their tactics were. And interesting enough, all the people had the same tactics, roughly. They were waiting, anticipating it to come down, jumping a little bit higher. So it's, it's all about anticipation and how they perceive, but when they perceive the helicopter might go. They then analysed all the data, and they found out something rather amazing. And that was that all the conscious awareness, if you like, of how to, to catch the helicopter was completely false. It was not what was going on at all. What they discovered was that the subconscious mind was taking a, a, an overall view and fixing a point on a static background. And that was the only way in which the, 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 the mind could work out where the helicopter might go. In other words, everything was about the, the background, if you were, fixing this, and the subconscious was really driving the person, not the conscious mind, although they thought they were. Everything was about the subconscious mind passing the information down through. So the subconscious mind was doing all the analysis, if you like. Very much like, you know, if you think about the, uh, the background of the gym and the person, when I talk about form and content in the markets. markets. Now, interestingly enough, the military then took the same information and applied it to uh, the, the, the guys who'd sit down and look at... Um, the uh, satellite uh, screenshot, the image, the photographs that they take of the terrain, and look when they're when they're looking for hot spots, so to say, on the on the uh, the, the satellite uh, images. Now, what they did with these guys was, rather than normally they'd been trained to look at an image and pour over it inch by inch, uh, you know, with a small magnifying glass, looking for these areas of interest, the military interest. What they did was they simply said, just flash these images before. And they were given seconds to look at an entire image. 
And the only instruction they were given was just mark down if you think that chart is or that image is worthy of a second look. Absolutely amazing results were that they get more hits and, and, and were able to view an enormous amount of photographs with much more success by simply bringing these through and letting the subconscious tell them, okay, this may be of interest. And later on they went back and then they done the, the, the more intricate study. Okay, where does this get, get us to Pat Software? Well, what we've done is, what we, we, we worked out is that we already had a, a, what we call a brain training feature in Pat Software, but we decided to take this information and add to this and allow the trader the, trader to, the trader's mind, if you like, to become in the sync, synchronization with what was going on in the subconscious mind and the conscious mind in a way to give the trader an intrinsic insight in what was about to happen next. And it is absolutely outstandingly simple and yet so, so powerful, which I will cover in, a, in another video directly onto the chart. But let me just say what we're doing here is that with the trader, when they, uh, they, they arrive at the, the, their training screen, they simply have to click one button, the chart will move back to a certain point in time, which you will specify, and again, I'll show you this in the, in the, next, the next video, and then the market will come forward at a varying degree of speed. And what this allows you to do, it's, it's way too fast for you to analyze at a conscious level. But what it's doing is, it's presenting this information to you in such a way that it is just looking for you to become in tune. It is allowing you to think, aha, or you get that aha moment, then you know what's going to happen next. And that will run right away forward, keep on going and going and going, right through until we actually arrive at the live point of the chart, which is gonna be the very next moment. So what, if you like, think about this, it's allowing your mind to connect on when you first start trading, come right away through and to the point of the live chart at the start where you will be empowered to then make that decision. If you're not, it simply means that your mind has not made that connection yet to what's going, what's happened and what is about to happen you simply go back and you come forward again. And that's the beauty of this. You can continually do this with the click of one button to get your mind and the market in a synchronized position where you truly have an understanding about the, where the market's going to go. And just finishing up on this, if we really analyze ourselves and a lot about the trading we do, how many times have you sat down, turned on a screen, and you know instantly what that market's going to do and where it's going to go? More often than not, the traders do not have confidence to do that because it's something they don't understand where that knowledge or that information has come from. By using the market mind synchronization function in PAT, you will be training yourself to use this on a consistent basis. And more importantly, you will have the confidence to use it because you'll know where it's come from. Anyway, this video has gone on far too long. I'm gonna get on to the next video now. I'm gonna show you this and how this all works directly on the PAT screen. Catch up with you soon. Hi, welcome back. Now, I hope you enjoyed that. Now, we're not going on to the next video, of course, because it was three years ago, and we don't need to do that, because you've got Pat, and you can uh, click on this. So it's the mind, it's the sync button in Pat. That's what I'm talking about on there. So, and you understand how that works about getting in, in, in bringing the mind sync. You're really, what you're doing is you're connecting yourself to the market. Now, just one thing I want to correct uh, quickly. I'm very sorry, I didn't, I said to you how much time you voted your course, but then when I was talking about it, I talked, I related to effort. That was not my intention at all. Uh, as um, somebody brought that up on there, sorry about that. I didn't mean to do that. Um, yeah, when you, of course, the time you are, if you're not, if you're working or whatever, then you can't devote the time to it. But of course, you you try and do what you can and devote as much time as you can. Um, now, somebody just put a, Paul just put up and said, we want to be a guided smart missile, not like a sniper shooting weapon. I understand totally what he means there, how a smart weapon is finding its, is, is finding its way. It's a bit like something I read in the book many, many years ago. Um, I don't know if torpedoes work this way now. They probably don't. But, uh, you know, a torpedo gets you its target, not by, it, it, you know, you point it at, the, at what it is and um, your, your target. And as it goes off course, it corrects, but it overcorrects and then overcorrects. But constantly it's coming back, coming back and closer and closer until it gets to the target. And, and that, in a way, that's what you are doing. That's what uh, really um, uh, Paul's saying, rather than just looking bang and, you know, getting a... Yeah, um, yeah. Probably, probably that's not a good, 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 good analogy. But anyway, I, I, hopefully you pick um, pick up what Paul says from there. Okay, so now Neil Neil says that in the example I explained, you would get out earlier. So when I was talking about the stop loss order, and where you had the fifteen pip stop loss, uh, and you said, okay, I'm going to leave this. Uh, uh, that's where I'm going to leave that. I've got, okay, cross your arms. I've got a fifteen pip stop loss. I'm going to sit here now and just wait and see what happens. He asks, in this case, would you get out earlier? Of course, because you'd have that sense of knowing 
and then you would close that trade off. So your losses are very small. And notice on Stephen's interview where he said about the last trade he did, I think it's where he, he said, I just closed it off and took an 8-bit loss because I, you know, I knew it was not the right thing to do. So he closed it off and took that loss. And he also says how easy it is to then recover that. So think about that, the difference between, you know, um, five, five stop outs uh, to, at 8 pips or five stop outs at 15 pips. It takes a lot of pulling back, a lot more pulling back uh, by not using the sense of knowing. And this is another, another way, and I said to you when we start, started off this course, that a trader will never be truly famously successful until they learn how to lose, okay? And learning how to lose is using that sense of knowing. Uh, that's the way uh, to learn how to do that. Okay, um, so we're sort of getting to the end now. I've done, gone all through the interviews. I've gone through the questions. If we've got any more questions up, uh, I'm just having a look on there. I can see uh, Goran and Marcus are having a little to and fro about the um, hockey. I don't know anything about hockey. I don't know anything about hockey, but um, obviously it's quite a passionate sport for them. I wonder who will win. Okay, so is there anyone that wants to come on? If you do, if you want to come on to Skype now, just give me a call and um, we can take a, a call onto there to go over anything. Um, just before that, um, I will take a call straight away. So if you want to just come in, I'll just stop what I'm doing and I'll take that call straight away. Uh, I just want to talk to you about, um, about past experience. Uh, and, and I've written some notes down here, tainted by past experience. Now, when you... What I'm trying to, trying to get across here is, um, well, let's give, it, let's give it an example. Let's try and give you an example. If you um, don't like fish, okay? So you don't like fish, and you've, you've had some fish, you've eaten some fish, and you don't like the fish. You're not particularly attracted to fish as eating. You, and somebody says to you, do, you, do you like fish? You can have this, what will happen is you'll have an automatic response. You'll have something that will uh, come up, and it will, like an inner dialogue or a feeling, I don't like fish, okay? Now, what happened, what, what the possibility that you've just passed up on is that you may really love this type of fish. Given another example, maybe you heard the word fish, but in another language, it means something else. And they were talking about a completely different thing. Now, I'm getting a bit, I'm getting a bit off, off, you know, a bit wide here. But the point I'm trying to make is that we form judgments about everything, but we form it on past response. It is, an, it is either an outwardly spoken response or it's an inward, in analyzed response. We've got a call coming in at the moment, so I'm going to take that call now and I'll come back to this uh, in a moment. So let's just take this call now from Paul and we'll put him over on, hey, Martin. on there. It's Paul. Good morning, Paul. Or is it good morning where you are? Uh, we're uh, Midwest uh, United States, so it's middle of the afternoon. Oh, okay. I haven't got your video. Why haven't I got your video on? I don't know. Is it not? It says, what do I need to do? Yeah, it says video not started. So I've just got this um, image of you, which isn't an image really. It's just a head and a shape. Can you uh, click your... <laughs> I see it. Uh, can you? It's, there should be hmm. a button somewhere that says to click and you'll start your video. Show in your mind. Man, I don't. Oh, there it is. There it Let's is. see if that helps. Are you going to come on? Are you going to come through? You are. You're here. There you go. All right. So you're mid. <laughs> so you're Midwest. Yep, Midwest United States, right in the middle. Okay. And what time is it? Yeah, there? nice and we're, we're nice and cold here too. Oh, everywhere is cold. It's New Zealand is lovely and warm at the moment. We do get cold, but not where I live. <laughs> we're not that cold anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got this. Hey, I was just uh, go on far away. Okay, well, I was just going to talk about that comment I made about the sniper and a guided oh, missile. Yes, and it's, yes. and it's about it's about it's my interpretation of it, okay. and um, um, it's about entering and managing the trade. Um, it's kind of like you know, before we enter, it's just like you say, you have a belief that it's going to go up or down, whatever. So you enter the trade. And you've done all these calculations, and that's what a, a sniper and a sniper team does: is they do all the calculations, they pull the trigger, and it's just like you'd have if you'd say, "Well, I'm going to put in a 15-point stop loss." Well, once they pull the trigger and they've got a locked-in stop loss, that their projectile is going in one direction. You right. can't correct it. You can't do anything. Okay. As compared to a smart bomb, 
is if it's a smart bob, and this is, you know, where we talk about, I started here just recently not putting any in my simulations, no, no uh, stop loss at all, you know. Right. But it's, it's kind of like this, is, is it's just what you're saying. It keeps you engaged, and you can adjust. So if you thought that this was a high-volume turn coming up and everything looked good and uh, it didn't work out, how, you know, what do you do with a smart bomb? You either correct it or you can destroy it or do whatever. It's You just get out of the trade. Right. But once the, you know, it's compared to the sniper, when he pulls that trigger, that, that projectile is going to the end. And it'd be just like if you had a... a a stop loss set in when you started, you locked it in, Every, all the decisions are made where, where um, it's, it's a smart missile, which is kind of what we have to be, where you're talking about staying yeah. engaged and managing it all, yeah. that uh, you kind of keep it that way. So that's kind of how that comment I, I am about. really pleased that you came on and explained that because now, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful analogy. I, I will use that. I'll probably steal that and patent that idea. And, uh, and I'll say, well, I thought of that, <laughs> and that was my interpretation. I'll destroy this bit of video after we finish, so nobody ever knows that it wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, that's that's okay. That's okay. I'll I'll, uh, I'll I'll call it in because New Zealand's on my bucket list to come to. So okay, I'll well, call well, that I look, I look very much forward to meeting you. Uh, we'll discuss it more when we meet up on there. No, no, no thanks very much. Now that's a really, really good. Um, a good analogy. Um, I'll just come and look. There's a couple of um, questions come in as well. Oh, Marcus has said, welcome, Texas. Um, there we go. So Marcus, <laughs> all the way from Finland, Finland is welcome, Texas. Isn't technology amazing? We, you know, we can talk to each other around the world like this. It's incredible, really. Um, Neil says, 15 pips from your entry. Uh, she doesn't mean could you escape along for some time. Right, just one of the things, I'm just going to have a quick read of this here, because I think it's quite important. It says, um, does that mean that you could expect a long position to drop 15 pips before it goes up another 45? Um, that would be, that, that's sort of getting in a, bit, a bit into a mechanicalized process, if you think about it. That's going away right. from your torpedo. It's not, um, it's not managing the trade, because you're sort of thinking, do I expect this to go down 15 pips? You have this mental measurement in your mind, and that could encourage you to put this stop in, yeah, I like you've summed up everything in that in that smart bomb and sniper situation. I love that, and I'm sure that everybody, every other student is going to be able to re relate to that. I'm certainly I won't need to make any notes about that. I will remember that. So, okay, well, <laughs> while you're on, Paul, where, how, where where are you? Where where are you in terms of where we're going? How do you feel your journey's getting? Are you, are you on your journey? Where whereabouts are you? Um. My journey changed a little. I've been around a while and never yes. really could catch on. And, and uh, I don't know uh, how many meetings or how many sessions ago when uh, you talk to somebody about psycho-cybernetics. Right. Yeah, psycho-cybernetics. Well, I got right. that book and Stop Trade. I did the same thing. He's from Ohio. He's just a neighbor of mine, you know, a few hours away. Right. Uh, and I stopped trading because I learned there's so much. And that's kind of how I came up with that scenario I just did. Right. But uh, there are a lot of focus that I was out of. I really didn't have goals, the correct way to accomplish goals. And so I've gone through this process. And that book was tough to read. It took me two, two weeks to get through that thing. It was yeah. chapter, one chapter, quit. Yeah. One chapter, quit. You know, and then backtrack and forward and back. Yeah. Um, but it really defined some stuff for me. Yeah. And um, I've actually, I, I fought Sims. Um, the last three times I've been on just kind of where my sequence is, is, uh, I've been like 50, 60, 50 or something like that pips each time. Now it's right. only, I only do one day. Right. I do, I, I do one, I don't do a five day period. I do one day and, um, maybe have one or two trades, but the one or two trades, it's kind of like that, that missile theory is that if I do, if I enter it because my sense of knowing or whatever says that this should be happening now, um, and then it doesn't happen, I just get out. Right. It, it, it's just uh, uh, whoever was on last, they said, you know, if it's not working, just get out. Yeah. I, I and love, and wait for that, the opportunity yeah. to come again. Yeah, wait for the opportunity to come again. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, – it, yeah. uh, I can see a lot the, the going on there. Is, is I can see a lot going on, and, and you know that book. It is uh, that book is an incredible book. And for those that don't know know that book, I put it up as um, Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. I don't know if he's, he's he'd be dead now, would he? He must be dead now. Yes, he's got to be. 
I, I think I think so. Anyway, yeah, but, well, yeah okay. I think he's got, he's got to be long since. But you know, he left this tremendous legacy. And um, you know, what the thing that uh, just a quick synopsis. I mean, uh, we're not a synopsis of the book, but one of the things I think that really struck me, and when I read this book, I was probably I was probably in my twenties. And it had a profound effect on me at that age because I just started reading a lot of books and it had a, had a profound effect on me. But um, the thing that, that uh, really sort of stuck about me was this, as how as a surgeon, as a plastic surgeon, you know, he would operate on one person and it would be this, then he completely change them and it would change their life completely. They would just wake up from their operation and their whole lives, everything would be changed. And yet it would take another person, the same operation or similar operation, dramatically change this person they would come around from it and say nothing had changed, despite being shown photographs on evidence of the dramatic change in their appearance or whatever it was the surgery had had. There was no difference, and and, you know, and him putting that together and saying, you know, this is all this came down to it was the scalpel, yes, but it was the the the, the inner self, it was the self image, and if the self image didn't change, well, you know, you know, you read the book, nothing changes. Uh, and um, yeah. so the book goes on to talk about us changing our, changing our self-image, which is, uh, yeah, absolutely vitally important, I say. And I read that book probably in my, yeah, probably in my 20s, uh, something like that, I remember. But, uh, I've read a lot of, lot of books, and I always remember that one as being the one that, I've still got a copy. Not the same copy, I've still got, I've still got a copy, because I used to give it to people, and um, I find myself doing that, and I just go and buy another, buy another copy. It's a great book to give somebody. Um, yeah, yeah I, I find a lot of your terminology or all of a sudden it flashes right back to that book. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. you used it today, you know, mechanics, you talked about one of the questions was on mechanics yeah. and you know, they, they talk about that stuff, which is, I mean, you could relate those same things to uh, uh sense of knowing, yeah. you know, he, he kind of yeah. calls it creative mechanisms, yeah. which is you could put sense of knowing in that same space, same phrase, and it, yeah. it'd be the same exact yeah. thing. And I think another thing I like about that book, Paul, is the fact that you can, uh, after you've read the book, you put it down, you can at any time open that book, flick through it, just flick through it anywhere and start reading wherever you are. And, you know, you can get some, uh, some great insight, um, often about where you are. Um, anyway, but hey, we're not selling this book. We're doing a great job well, on this book, but it's a great book. So buy it. Go buy the book. It's only a few dollars anyway. It's not a not a great expensive book. So I'll probably put a link up on the site to it. But anyway, for those who want to know, Maxwell Maltz, Psycho Cyber Psycho Cybernetics. Okay. <laughs> All right, Paul. Well, thank you very much for uh, coming on, and uh, great to hear from you. Let's keep in close contact, and um, yeah, we'll speak soon. Have a good day. Okay. Take care. Well, hi, welcome back. Well, I'll say welcome back. You hadn't actually gone anywhere, had you, of course? Um, okay, so if anybody else wants to come on, do call now. Um, Marcus says, I'm buying its homework. Um, Marcus, once you, this is interesting, this is an interesting comment from Marcus. He said, once you try or experience sense of knowing, you are hooked on it. Uh, that is so, so true. It becomes like, a, almost like, oh, I don't know what a drug is like, but an you know, addictive drug, but it becomes, um, um yes yeah, something you really want to experience again it gives you a rush it gives you a sense of empowerment i think that's the word that's the word empowerment you feel empowered when you're using sense of knowing and you can become very addicted to that which is which is a which is a great thing to be addicted to um so that's where i'm trying to bring okay right well that's about it on the questions on there um we've gone through everything pretty, pretty much for this show next week we're going to uh, so if you want to call in just do call in now before we end before we end next week we're going to go on to it'll be i think it's three near three o'clock in the afternoon my local time which gives us a much better time for our cousins across the pond so we can't uh, we haven't got to give them a fair crack of the whip so uh, as always i've enjoyed this show it's been fantastic i hope you've enjoyed it everything's worked so that's been a pretty good uh, pretty good turnout I look forward to catching up with you on the next show. Meanwhile, any questions, send them over on email. You don't have to wait until the show. You can send something over um, on email, and then I can address that on the show, or I can come back to you uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis on email or whatever, however you want to do it. And, of course, if you want to come on on the interview, we can do that as well in the week. So have a great time, a great week uh, coming up, and I will catch up with you very soon. Bye now.